Amen. Hey, we're going to sing more in a little bit. Please be seated for now, and you can grab your Bibles. Uh, in that book, the Bible is the Holy Spirit breathed Word of God. Someone say amen. amen. And so we want to look to that. We're going to look at 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, a part of the Bible that might be new to some of you. It's not a place in the Bible that everyone wanders through accidentally. Uh, you've got to go there on uh, intentionally. And I want to teach you a song tonight, because every, every month this year, each night of worship, all year long, we're looking at a song from the Bible, and we're singing with the singers in the Bible. And I'm going to teach you the whole song, okay? And I'm going to help you memorize the whole song. Here it is. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Let's get that up on the screen there. So, okay, ready? Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Now, here's verse 2. Okay, ready? Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. You ready for verse 3? Anybody catching on yet? Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. When you see someone singing, when you hear somebody walking along and whistling, when somebody's got a song in their heart, you can kind of listen to the tune, you can listen to the words, and you can kind of get a sense of what's happening inside of them, kind of the situation that they're in. If something's in a minor key and it's really slow and sad, that tells you something. If something's kind of up. But the words here, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. This is a song that's being sung in the middle of a battle. Right in the middle of a battle. And yet the song is give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. This is the song that's being sung before the battle's over. The, the people that are going to go walk in this battle don't know how it's going to turn out. They know who God is. They know that God is with them. But they're singing, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. And so every passage in the Bible, I like to say every text in the Bible, every text has a context. Every passage has a place that it sits in the history of the world, in the history of God's people. And we need to know that context. And so every song has a setting. And here, this time that we're looking at right now, is the time of the divided kingdom. It was a time of civil war. Uh, none of us have walked through civil war. But this is a time of civil war, and the 12 tribes of God's people are at odds with each other. Here's a little map for you to look at. I want you to see that this is what had happened. All the area that's kind of in, in, that, kind of in that light purple and the green, that was all God's people united together. And then they got into a battle, into a war with each other that lasted generation after generation after generation. And up in the north where you see the word Israel, <clears throat> that was 10 of the tribes of God's people. Their capital was Samaria. And they were called, they, they called themselves Israel or Ephraim. And then down below in Judah, the part in green there, that's the other two tribes. And their capital is Jerusalem. And, and they're in this time of incredible civil war that's lasted a long time. There's tension. There's conflict. So in chapter 18 of, of, uh, of, the, of this text of the Bible, in 2 Chronicles, uh, in chapter 18 in 2 Chronicles, we find out that, that Ahab, the king up in the north there, the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, they, they create an alliance. You know what an alliance is. If you ever watch Survivor or any of these shows, where there's, you know, they, they create an alliance. They, get, they, they start working with each other. But the problem is they have completely different values. The problem is the king up in the northern kingdom, up in Israel, is rebelling against God. And so tension begins to grow in that time. In chapter 19, we read about Jehoshaphat, who's the king of, the, of, the, of Judah, down in the south there. And we learned that he was a great and godly king, but he also made mistakes. Did you know that great and godly people can make mistakes? Do you know that every single great and godly people, person in this world makes mistakes? And Jehoshaphat did too. And so in chapter 20 now, it's civil war. They've kind of bound together even though there's tensions going on. Jehoshaphat's having his own personal struggles. And now in chapter 20, we see this coordinated attack on Judah and Jerusalem. So Jehoshaphat's kingdom, God's people in Jerusalem, hear these words in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. After this, the Moabites, a large nation that lived near them, and the Ammonites, with some of the Meunites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. So we're making war against, against two of the tribes of God's people. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. <clears throat> it is already in He. Hazazon, Tamar, that is En Gedi. Now watch this. He gets bad news. This massive army is coming to attack them. Look what happens in verse 3. Alarmed. I love this. He's alarmed. He would be. What happens next? 
Joseph had resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. We got to talk to God. Let's stop eating for a while. Why? So we can pray. How much? A lot. One of the things you do in fasting, the idea of fasting is every time your stomach growls or you feel hungry, you pray. So when you fast, guess what you do a lot? Pray. Every time the hunger pain comes, you pray. So, so they're fasting, they're praying, they're seeking the Lord. Verse 4, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. So the response is to pray, to fast, to cry out to God. But they don't know how it's going to turn out because they're already in the civil war. They're already having conflict within their own nation. And now these outside nations have banded together and they are coming in to destroy their country, to destroy their nation. And they have no idea what's ahead. Now, each week, each month when we gather for night of worship, we talk about these songs. Every song has a singer. And the whole community of God's people, they pray together and they begin to sing together as they get ready to go into battle. The whole community is praying, seeking God, and singing. Look at 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6. Here's the prayer. Lord, the God of our ancestors, you've been with us for generations. Are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give them it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They're praying, saying, God, you, you brought us into this land. You gave us this new home, a land flowing with milk and honey. You gave us the promised land. And now it feels like we're going to get slaughtered. We're going to get attacked. And we don't have any power to defend ourselves. And every song has a central message. And the message here is our God deserves our gratitude and his love is eternal. It's a simple little song. Just read this as I, as I read it. Read it with me. Give thanks to the Lord... For his love endures forever. Let's read that again. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. The battle attitude was this. I will give thanks to God. Why? Because I know his love is with me. For how long? Forever and forever and forever. I will give thanks to God. Let's hit the pause button for a minute. And let me ask you. What battle are you facing tonight? What battle are you facing? There might be five or ten people in this room and online, maybe five or ten people, that don't have a battle they're facing. But my guess is that almost everybody has some kind of battle. My wife had surgery on her ankle. So now she goes around on this cute little scooter and pushes around because she's not allowed to put any weight on her foot. And if you know my wife, my wife is filled with energy and excitement and joy. When I'm in my office and she walks by, I know it's her because the pace she walks. And now she can't. And she's dealing, that, that, you go, well, that's, that's not like this battle. No, but that's her battle. Some of you are in relational battles right now. I know that because I sit up here, every Sunday I'm here, and I pray with person after person after person, and there's a lot of relational tensions, a lot of marriages that are struggling. It's a battle. A lot of family members who aren't talking to each other because they have different views of how the world should function, and in a weird way, we become so divided as a culture. Maybe that's your battle. It could be a health battle. Some of you are having financial battles. It's like you open the mailbox and you go, okay, there's a bill, there's a bill, there's a bill. You look at how much we have and how much we've got to pay, and you go, Lord, what do I do? I don't know what your battle is, but I do know a song you could sing in the middle of the battle. I give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Sometimes in the middle of the battle, you have to declare the truth. God, I don't know how the battle's going to end. But I know I can give thanks to you because of who you are. You are the Lord. You are on the throne. You rule. You reign. I will give you thanks. Thanks to God even in a battle. Here's the deal. If we don't give God, th God thanks when we're in a battle, we're not going to give him thanks very often. Because there seems to always be something coming our way. I'm not being negative. I'm just saying it's the way life seems to be. We live in an imperfect and broken world. So you give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Great songs can move a heart. A great song can change your heart, can move your heart. And, and that, that, that's all kinds of songs, but in particular songs inspired by the Spirit of God. And this song, Give Thanks to the Lord, for His love endures forever, should move your heart. That you can declare the God I know, the God who saved me, the God I love, He loves me. His love never stops, not one day in this lifetime, not one day for all of eternity. He loves me. His love endures forever. 
This last Sunday, I got to listen to two sermons and preach one sermon. I got to preach the one sermon I preached two times. I was driving out to the Bay Area. And we had a guest preacher here, if you were here. And I was preaching out in the Bay Area. I made that commitment about six months ago. And so as I was driving out there, I knew that my youngest son, Nate, was preaching in Michigan at 9.30. And I was driving out at 6.30 in the morning. So I just put on their service and I listened to the sermon. And then when I got to Brave Church, I preached twice. And on the way home, I watched Shoreline's sermon. Well, watched. I'm driving. I listened to Shoreline's sermon and glanced occasionally at my iPad. Uh, but was very safe on the road. Uh, but, <clears throat> but as I listened to my son Nate preach, he told a story. I thought about putting it up on the screen, but I'm just going to tell you the story. He told the story of when he and his wife were getting ready to have their first child, Cohen, our first, our first grandchild. And he talked about how they had, they had been in and out of the hospital because she had preeclampsia, just a battle of health things as they were getting ready, but that's life. And then they went to the hospital. They said, hey, everything's fine, go home. Got home, they, they got home, her water broke. They went to go back, had to drive up 68th Street, and they had 68th Street closed, which means there's no way to get anywhere if 68th Street's closed and you're coming from there unless you go all the way around. Talked to the guy, and he actually realized she really was pregnant and brought him through. But he, he told the congregation that he serves in Michigan, he said, there we were in the hospital room. Everything was crazy. The baby, you know, it was like we were waiting, and the doctor, he said, the doctor wasn't there. And finally, he said, Dr. Alexander, who's actually the vice president of our board here at Shoreline Church, um, he, he said he came in like a superhero, walked in the room. Everybody looked at him. He came over, delivered the baby, put the baby in their arms. And he said, they're all doing the baby stuff and the, the team's around. The nurses are doing things. And the whole room's buzzing. And he said, and then at one point, Dr. Alexander went like this. He just said, everybody stop. And Nate said, everybody just stopped where they were. And he said, he walked over to Nate and Bryn, my son and his wife and their firstborn child. And he said, he said, look at this, look at your son. He said, I bet you never dreamed you could kind of feel the kind of love you feel right now for this little boy. And then he said, God's love for you is so much greater. It's, it, what you have for your son is a fraction of God's love for you. My son Nate said in that, in that sermon, he said, I've never forgot that moment. Sometimes I go through a day and I forget how much God loves me, but I haven't forgot that moment. And I can go back and I can remember that. I will give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Every moment, all the time, even in your battle, his love endures forever. The greatest songs can transform a life. Your life will be changed if in the midst of your battles... You will give thanks to God. Now listen closely. You're not thanking God for the battle. If you're going through a battle, uh, we've walked, we walked with people through all kinds of painful things in life. And I've never said to people when evil, when evil breaks into their life, when true evil is there, I never say, hey, thank God for the evil. We don't thank God for that. But you can give thanks to God that he's with you while you're facing the evil. You can give thanks to God that he never lets your hand go whatever you face. You can always give thanks to the Lord. We give thanks in all things, not for all things. Some things are just wrong and bad. But we can thank God while we're in them because we know his love endures forever. So I want to invite you to think deeply. Where do you need to pray, fast, and sing the truth of God in the midst of your battle? I want to ask you just to bow your head for a moment and quiet your heart. And I'm going to invite the worship team to begin making their way back up here. We're going to go to communion in just a moment, but I want to ask you just to quiet your heart. What battle are you in right now? Or, if you're not in a battle, I suspect there's someone very close to you who is right in the middle of the storm, right in the middle of the battle. And maybe you need to pray and fast, so every time your stomach grumbles and you feel a hunger pain, you pray even more. And sing to God, even if it's through tears. I give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. I give thanks to you, Lord, for your love endures forever. What's your battle? And what's your disposition? Are you still thanking the Lord because he is the Lord? Not for the battle, but for the one who's with you in the battle. Not for the battle, but for the one who always brings victory. Not victory the way we would define it, but he always wins because God is on the throne. Will you give thanks to the Lord because his love endures forever? In just a moment, we're going to come to the table and we're going to share communion together. And before we do, I want to give you an invitation to 
just begin praying about that area of your life where you're in a battle. That you would not try to come to the table for communion uh, ignoring the battles you face, but bring those things with you to the table. Bring those things with you right as you come to the Lord. And prepare your heart to meet with Him. Prepare your lips to praise Him. And commit yourself to declare and give thanks to the Lord for God, your love endures forever. And after communion, I'm going to give you an invitation, but I want you to begin thinking about this. We're going to have six stations, three on each side of the worship center, and each one's got a prayer person there. And if you're in a battle right now that you just say, I need to pray in a deeper way, I want to have someone come around this battle with me and pray with me. Then after communion, we're going to give you an invitation to come to those prayer places and just join folks for prayer. But for right now, just quietly in your heart, prepare to come to the table. If you're here in the worship center, or out in the courtyard, I want to ask you to take the little communion uh, cup that you were given and peel off that top piece just so you can take that little wafer and put it in one hand and then peel off the other covering and have the juice ready. So kind of have that wafer in one hand and the juice in the other hand. If you're out, if you're online, I'd encourage you right now to go and get some crackers and juice or some bread and wine, whatever you have in your house uh, to, to partake in communion with us. And maybe you've come to nights of worship you haven't actually got up and got those elements, go, go get a saltine cracker and some grape juice, whatever you have, and just bring it back so you can partake with us. And as you look in one hand at that wafer you're holding, if you look in the other hand at that cup, listen to these words from Scripture, from 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And as we prepare our hearts for coming to the table tonight and reflecting on the passage that Kevin shared and those 10 words, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And thinking about the words of Jesus, communion is a reminder. It's a time for us to give thanks to the Lord to pause in the midst of the craziness of our day, the challenges that maybe we face today, and to give thanks to the Lord. And I'm reminded of that in this passage. It says, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and then what did he do? And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Jesus was getting ready to face the ultimate battle. And in the midst of the battle, before the battle, Jesus gave thanks. So tonight, I want to just take a moment and just pause right now in the quietness of your heart and say, thank you, Lord. What are you thankful for right now in your day? Just pause and say, thank you, Lord. And communion is also a time for us to recognize God's love. And just as Pastor Kevin said, we can't even fathom the love of God for us. But we know that we see that love expressed in the sacrifice of Jesus, the one who gave all for all. We think about God's love. And we thank him for that tonight. And communion is also a time to think about eternity, about forever. Because when Jesus' body was broken, when his blood was shed, when he died on the cross, he opened the way to heaven. He tore the curtain to the most holy place, a place in the temple, in the ancient temple, where only the priest could go once a year. And when Jesus was on that cross, the Bible says that that curtain that kept people from going in the temple was torn from top to bottom by the very hands of God. So God opened a way that forever we could be with him. So as you hold that wafer in your hand, as you hold that cup in your hand, in just a moment as you partake of them, 
you're declaring that Jesus died. He paid the price. He was broken. He was poured out to make me new, to give me not just life now, life abundant, that's part of it, but to give me life forever. And we come to partake of communion. It's a chance to recommit our hearts, to walk with the one who loves us and the one who saves us. This is a great time in the quietness of this moment to say, Lord, I, I got busy and just living life and I've forgotten all you've done for me, how good you are to me. And in this moment, as I hold the bread, as I hold the cup, I remember you. So as we prepare to partake, I would say to all those gathered, whether you're online or here in the worship center, um, communion is for those who've made that commitment to follow Jesus. If you're visiting with us and you're not yet a follower of Jesus, we are so glad you're here. It's such a good time to be together, even as you're trying to figure out the whole God thing. Wherever you are spiritually, we're glad you're here. But as we partake of communion, this is really for those who know what this means. You understand that his body was broken for you. His blood was shed for you. So if you've made that commitment to Jesus, and if you're from another church background, but you're a Christian, you put your faith in Jesus, this isn't the table of Shoreline Church. This is the table of Jesus. And we invite you to partake with us. So let's prepare our hearts as we come to the table together. And so the bread that we partake of tonight represents the body of Jesus, his body broken for you and for me. We think about bread for the people of Israel that God provided in the wilderness. He provided manna, the bread of life. And Jesus himself called himself the bread of life. Jesus is our bread of life. He is God's provision for us. So tonight, as we break the bread, we're reminded of Jesus' precious gift to us as his body was broken on the cross for you and for I to be made whole, to be reconciled to the Father. And so let's partake of the bread together. at that table more than 2,000 years ago. Jesus took the cup and he poured it out. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. His life poured out. His love poured out as the payment for our sins. This cup reminds us of the price that God paid because he loves us. His love does endure forever. So as we partake of this cup, remember the price he paid. And ask yourself this question. Who would give their life for you? Can you think of anybody who would, without thinking, knowing all that you are and all your frailties and struggles, who would say, I would die for you. And Jesus says, I'm at the top of the list. I gave my life for you. So we partake of this cup and remember the price he paid and the greatness of his love. Let's partake together. Let's just quiet our hearts for a moment. As we prepare to continue in worship, I want to give you a couple of invitations. If you're in the middle of a battle right now, of any sort, financial battle, relational battle, emotional battle, professional work battle, you just feel like you're in the middle of it all. And you just, you just want to have someone join with you and pray for God's power, that you would experience His presence and His love and His strength that's with you forever. I'll encourage you as we start to sing, we're going to sing a, couple, a number of songs right now. Use this time just when you're ready to get up and head to one of the prayer folks on the side. There's a chair with each person and you can sit there if you're there. There's a couple. One can sit and one can stand. But just join one of our prayer team members and just share with them what your battle is. God knows the details. Just share with them kind of a snapshot. And they, and they are going to pray. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Then they're going to pray for your battle for God's victory and God's power and God's presence. Because in the passage we looked at tonight, God delivered his people. God won the victory when they began to declare who he was and what he had done. If you want to, during this time of worship and song, come forward and kneel in the front here and take a moment to seek the Lord. 
We've got space to pray in the front here. And if while we're singing, you want to stand, and that expresses where you're in worship, please feel free to stand. If you want to sit quietly and worship being seated, that's absolutely fine. If you want to, if you want to kneel, find a quiet place to kneel, that's fine too. But just find a way that, 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 that feels right to you and seek the Lord in prayer, on the sides with people up front with the Lord or where you are, however you want to express yourself. Lord Jesus, we come before you and we thank you that your body was broken, that your blood was shed, that you paid the price for us. We give you thanks. We give you praise because your love endures forever. They were right in the middle of an ongoing civil war. But listen through the centuries and hear their voices cry out. We give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. They had a leader of their nation who was imperfect, made some bad choices. But they cried out, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. They were facing an enemy that was bigger than them. And as they marched out, they dared to sing, give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. And as they began to sing and praise the Lord, the word of God says, God brought the victory. Yeah. Read the story later tonight, all right? Yeah, amen. And so, as we close this time together, as you walk through your battles. I don't know what yours are. As I was praying tonight, God brought at least three distinct battles in my own life right now that I need to remember. I can give thanks to him in the middle of it because his love endures forever. I don't know what your battles are, but we know who the Lord is. Amen? Amen. And we know that his love endures forever. forever. If you have children here, they would love to see you very soon. And so when, we just, when I send you off with a word of blessing, go and get them. And then they would also love to come outside where the refreshments are and hang out and have some fun, have some fellowship, and have some refreshments. If you don't have kids uh, and you still want prayer, our prayer teams are on the side walls there. They would love to pray with you. So if you want prayer, don't leave here without that prayer. There is power in prayer. Amen? Amen. So if you want prayer, the prayer areas are still open, and we'll have refreshments outside. As you go from here, whatever you face, remember this one Simple truth, and sing this song. Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning, 9 o'clock and 11. Have a great rest of your week. and vivid.